Hey guys, uh, welcome to my video on regressions. I'm going to pick up exactly where we left off on the data on variable transformation and variable creation. Uh, like exactly where we left off. I just recorded that one like 30 seconds ago. So what we're going to do in this video is I'm going to bring up that linear model command, the LM command. And I'm going to show how to put dummy variables and different numbers of variables in it. And then I'm going to emphasize how to extract certain information from the linear model output. Like, for instance, how to pull out the R squared value or how to pull out the covariance matrix or something like that. Uh, extracting information so that you can then present it elsewhere. I'm also going to show how to store regression output in a table. and I do some early work in showing how to refine those output tables and make them a little more presentable. That'll probably get a whole separate video of its own later, so I don't go very far into it. So uh, with no further ado, here we go. So here we were, and we had just run this regression, which I called wage reg one. And again, I can na name this thing whatever I want to. Um, I've got my YouTube data already built from the last video. And let's figure a couple of things out. One of the things I want to do is anytime you see this, where the same piece shows up a bunch of different times in your code, there's probably a good way to shorten it out. Computer programmers are both hardworking and lazy in a strange mix. And rather than typing YouTube data dollar sign over and over and over, there's probably a better way to do it. So let's copy this. I'm gonna say this one is wage reg two. We'll compare them and see if they're similar. I'm gonna remove all of these YouTube dollar signs. Now you might be thinking, whoa, whoa, whoa. Isn't it going to think that the object isn't found if you don't tell R where to find it all? Well, simply put, yes. It's not going to know where to put any of that, where to get any of that information. But we can put an option in here. It says data equals YouTube data. And that will actually work. And wage reg two will end up looking the same as wage reg one. Okay. Now I want to explore things a little more because when I type wage reg two, it doesn't actually give me all that much information. It gives me the coefficients and nothing else, uh, at least initially. So what if I wanted to see what all is calculated? Because I'll tell you the truth, a lot of stuff gets calculated. I'm gonna say names, there's a new command we haven't looked at. Wage reg two. And wow, it's gonna calculate coefficients, residuals, facts, rank, all kinds of other stuff. All of this stuff we can call. So for instance, what if I wanted to look at uh, wage reg two, and I wanted to look at residuals? Well, I can tell YouTube where to find it. I'm looking for residuals, that's the name of something. And I'm specifically saying within wage reg two, what does it do? It gives me all of the residual value values or the error terms from this huge regression. Or what if instead, let's see, names wage reg two, what if instead I wanted to look at uh, the coefficients? Well, I could say wage reg two dollar sign coefficients. And it gives me those. And that's the first thing it normally does. So you can fiddle around with this names thing. It gives you this list of stuff you can call on and you can look at these specific pieces. Another option 
instead of this names idea, you can just look at the summary. Summary of wage reg two. And so here we see all the stuff you would normally expect to see. I've got an equation that tells me what I'm estimating wage as a function of education, experience, and experience squared. It tells me something other like residuals. It gives me all the coefficients. Notice those are the same as up, the same as what were listed before. Uh, it gives me standard errors, t values, p values, significance stars based on these p value thresholds. It gives me residuals. It gives me r squares. It gives me all kinds of stuff. Now, oftentimes, you're going to want to be able to get some of this stuff. And so I'm going to show you right now how to extract that information, and then we'll move on. So let's say, for instance, I want to get the R squared, and I want to pull it out of this. Now, I could do it by hand and like look at each regression I run and copy and paste my R squareds. That's not how computer programmers and coders like to do it. Uh, we want to figure out how to extract the information directly. So I am going to create this summary of wage reg two. I'm going to call it the summary of wage. I'm going to set it equal to the summary of wage reg two. So I know I'm not being very novel with my name creation. Remember, you could call this anything you want to. This could be called donuts, but then you have to remember what it means. But what about Let's look at what all information is contained in it. Names of the summary of wage reg two. Hey, look at that. I've got residuals I can pull out. I can pull out R squared. That's what I said we're gonna find. And I can also look at the covariance matrix, which will also be important at some point. So let's just take a look here real quick and let's try to pull out the R squared and the covariance matrix. So summary of wage reg two dollar sign r dot squared. And I will just call this wage two r squared. I'm gonna set it equal to the summary of wage reg two dollar sign r squared. Now again. I can call this whatever I want to. Don't get caught up on the naming. What I'm interested in here is the fact that I've got this summary of my regression, and from it, I'm extracting R squared. Let's also do it wage two covariance. I said that equal to the summary of wage reg two dollar sign covariance unscaled. Let's take a look at what these two objects look like. First, let's run this code. So that R stores those. Let's look at wage two R2. Hey, there's that R squared value, 0 0.13665. Hey, look, it's the same one as in there. Let's also look at wage two covariance. Oh yeah, it gives me the whole big matrix that we could end up needing to look at for our standard errors. And we'll come back to that later. Uh, yeah, so what have I done so far? I showed you how to run a regression and I showed you how to pull values out of that regression because at some point you'll need them. Uh, let's look at the next thing, which is just simply how to present a regression. I'm not gonna do a fancy graph in this video, but I am gonna do something that you're gonna like, uh, and that's the stargazer table. These things are lovely. So I need to open up a new library, library stargazer. If you haven't installed it, install dot packages, parentheses stargazer, there you go. Now let me run this real quick. Uh, now let's take a look here. Let's say table one, and I'm gonna set it equal to stargazer as a function of wage reg one and wage reg two. Let's see what that does. 
We'll add a bunch of options to it later. Oy, that gave me something ugly. Actually, it gave me something kind of beautiful. Uh, the Stargazer code can give you LaTeX output or HTML output or text output. Let's take a look at the documentation here because it obviously ran something. But unless you speak a certain kind of code, that doesn't make much sense. So let's take a look. Help Stargazer. Let's blow this out a little bit. Yeah, so this first default was LaTeX code. Uh, if you want to make it come out as a text or as HTML or whatever, I'm going to do text. Let's change our table one to stargazer. Let's add a, an option. Type equals text. Let's run that code and see what happens. Look at that. It gave me this table of these two different regressions. Now, because I told it, you go back, I told it to call the data in different ways. It's storing the data in different places. So I'm going to forevermore ignore wage reg one. Let's create a couple of more regressions. And we'll ignore wage reg one. We're going to format it the way we did with wage reg two. Uh, actually, you know what? It's probably just easier done than said. Let's just do it. So let's create wage reg three here. And instead of education, I'm going to use those education dummies that we created in the last video. Instead of education, I'm going to say educ dummies. We already created that. And let's also create a new table in our stargazer command. I'm copy and pasting that. I'm going to call this table two, which has wage reg two and wage reg three. And it creates a text of this. Let's run those and see what happens. Let me blow this up a little bit. All right, so what happened here? In the first regression, we had this education variable. In the second regression, we didn't, but we did have all of these different dummies. And so I'm able to look at these two regressions next to each other and compare output. Later with experience, those were in both regressions, and so it gets stored in both. Now, what about all these stats down here? What if I don't actually want to keep all of those? Uh, observations, R squared, adjusted R squared, residual standard error, F statistic. What if I don't need all of that stuff? Uh, for instance, what if I was only actually interested in including observations down there for my main table that I'm presenting? Somewhere in all this observation, in all this documentation, you'll find it. There's a keep stat, which its default setting is null. But I'm going to add it into this function that creates our table. And I'm going to say keep stat equals, and I can list whatever one of those statistics I want. So now let's look at what our table looks like. I normally have multiple screens, but that's harder to put in a YouTube video. So look down here at the bottom, it's cleaner. It doesn't have as much information, but it makes the thing I'm interested in pop out. Now, let's create a third table just for comparison's sake. Because we've got this one, which is a little bit cleaner. Let's do a table three. And in addition to only keeping the observation stat, what if we only wanted to keep our experience variables? And I don't want to keep that huge list of dummies because sometimes we don't need a huge list of dummy variables. Sometimes it's sufficient just to say I controlled for all of these different things, like state fixed effects. You don't need to present all 50. You just say you did. Uh, so I'm going to say keep, let's say we want to keep experience and experience squared. This actually, if I do it this way, won't actually work because R isn't going to know what I'm talking about. What I need to do instead is tell it these are named objects. And so it's going to get these little 
quotation marks around them. When I run it that way, my table now is getting quite compact. All it has is the experience variables from my two different regressions. Uh, it doesn't have all of those fixed effects. But if we looked at table two, it's got all of those things also. You'll notice that the experience and experience squared variables are the same. Let's see, 0 0.58, 0 0.698 for experience. Look, yeah, it's keeping the same information there, but it's omitted a lot of other stuff. Now, you may or may not be comfortable with that. Uh, I don't like to leave it just like that because that can be misleading. So uh, what I would also do is I would do something like add row, or sorry, add lines, and I would have it be something like this. Let's see, it'd be I concatenate stuff. I'm going to give it a title. I'm going to call it education controls. And then another object, which the first of our two regressions, so we have to do this part by hand, but the first of these two regressions did not have education controls. And the second one did have education controls. Let's see how that comes out for us. Oops, forgot my last parenthesis. Uh, notice there's no little caret or arrow here. It still thinks I'm going. So I could type another parenthesis here and then it'll finish. I'm just going to go and finish it in my code first, though. Run it again like that. Let's see what we got here. Now, it didn't do quite what I pictured with that because I wanted this no to be over here for the first regression and this yes to be over here for the second regression. And that's because I forgot to list these things. It's treating it as three separate objects, but I wanted to treat it as one list of all of these things. So let's see how that works. Boom, education controls. They're not in this regression, they are in that regression. So I think I got a little carried away there uh, with the Stargazer thing. Stargazer probably deserves its own video and maybe it'll get one later. But it's usually kind of what I'm interested in seeing when you present results in my class. I often don't need you to present every single thing because for a lot of the interesting questions, we need a lot of variables. What I want are variables that help us answer our research question, but then also some sort of list of what else you controlled for. Uh, I don't know. Either way, what have we gone over this video? I showed you how to run regressions and how to put dummy variables and other stuff in them. Uh, we'll probably mess around with standard errors later. We're going to do all kinds of fun stuff. But for now, I think this video is plenty long. So thanks for watching, guys, and happy econing.